In this video, we'll be looking at a basic PHP upload, taking some security and file size checking into account. So let's take a look at how this works. I'm going to choose a file here. In this case, it's a .txt extension, which I've allowed inside of my upload.php script. So if I go ahead and select this and hit upload, you see that uploads and all I've done is just output the location of the upload. I happen to have this open in here so I can refresh and see that that file has been uploaded. It's generated a unique identifier for the file name and when I hit it then you can see the contents of the file. So let's go ahead and build this PHP upload script. Okay so we're starting fresh here. If we head over to our text editor you can see that I've got three files open. These are the three files that we're going to be working with. Index is going to contain the form that we're going to choose the file from. Upload.php is going to check and process this file and actually upload it. And uploadme.txt is just the file that we're going to be uploading. Now all uploads are going to land in this uploads directory which is currently empty. Once we start to upload files we'll see these appear uh, in our uh, uploaded directory. So let's create the form first of all. Uh, if we go ahead and create a basic form element, we need to give this an action and a method and also an ink type to allow this to process file uploads. So the action is basically where this form submits to. In this case, it's upload.php. The method needs to be post. There are obviously post and get methods, but we'll be using post since this is sending file data. And the ink type here is going to be multi part slash form data. Now inside of this form we need to create an element uh, to allow a user to select a file and then a button to allow this form to be submitted. So we have an input type of file. We're going to call this file, that's what we're going to reference it um, as in PHP and we're going to have a submit button as well and we'll give this a value of upload. So let's take a look at that in a browser. It just looks like this. We can choose a file and hit that, hit upload, and that goes through to upload.php. So now we can go to upload.php and start to write the code that will allow this file upload to happen. The first thing we want to do is check whether the super global files contains file. And that is basically the name here that we gave this file here. So whatever you choose to call the name in your markup, you're going to want to change that here. And then subsequently in a minute when we say file equals, and again, the super global file, files and file. So file now contains all of the information about the file we've actually uploaded. So if you use the print R function here and pass in file, we can actually see the information about the file we choose. So if we hit upload uh, me.txt, you can see here that we've got a name, which is uploadme.txt. We've got a type, which is text plain. Now, we're not going to be using this to determine uh, the file type because it's unreliable. We've also got the temp name, which is where the file is currently stored before we move it. We've got whether there was an error or not, and we've also got the size of the file. So we can use some of the properties of this um, to actually check things like if there was an error, if the file is too large, etc, etc. So let's store some properties about the file. I'll just put a comment here, file properties. We're going to store the file name. So we just access the name key inside of that array that we just output then. We also want the file temporary location so we can use this later on to move the file and that's tmp underscore name. And we also want to grab the file size and that's just the size key. So we've got all the properties about the file, but what we want to do now is use a method of extracting the file extension from the file that's been uploaded. And this will allow us to whitelist only the files we want to accept. It's always better to whitelist than blacklist because you can, if you were to say I only want TXT and JPEG um, files to be uploaded, that would be a lot more or be a lot safer than saying I don't want this file, I don't want that file, etc, etc. So let's now work out the file extension. And this is fairly straightforward. Let's create a variable called file ext and let's explode the value of 
file name by a dot. Now what this means is we will then end up, if we do a print R on file extension, we'll end up with an array. This takes a string and it will explode it by a specific character turning it into an array. So if we refresh here and hit continue, you can see we've got an array with a key of zero called upload me, that's the name of the file. And this is now the extension of the file because we've exploded it by a dot. So now what we can do is we can say file ext is end an end will basically take the end element of an array which in this case is always going to be the file extension and we're also going to convert that to lower case because we're only going to provide the whitelist extensions as a lower case so now let's define which one uh, which file extensions we want to allow so we create an array I want to allow txt and I also want to allow JPEG files we'll be testing this with a txt file so now we're going to do a series of checks to make sure that there are no errors in the file upload. We're going to make sure that the uh, extension is actually allowed and we're also going to check the file size and then subsequ subsequently we're going to check if the file has actually been uploaded. So let's check if this is allowed first of all. I'm not going to implement any error handling here but you might want to implement your favorite sort of error handling method or system. So we're going to use the inArray function which will take a value and it will see if it's in an array. And in this case, it's checking whether the file extension is inside this allowed array. So let's suppose our file extension is txt. This will return true because txt is inside this array, the same with JPEG. So now what we want to do is check if the file has returned an error or not. So in actual fact, what we could do is store this value up here. We could say file error is file error in case we wanted to reuse it somewhere else so we're going to say is file error equal to zero um, if it is that means there are no errors so we're good so I'm going to nest a bit here which is probably bad practice but this is just demonstrating how we can do all these checks so I don't really mind for now but I'm going to say is the file size less than or equal to and I'm going to say this is two megabytes so I need this value in bytes which happens to be this but you can go over head over to Google and work this out. So now I want to generate a new file name because I don't want to generate a file name um, as it was uploaded. Let's say one user uploads a file called uploadme.txt. If the next user uploads a file called uploadme.txt, that will overwrite that other file without warning. So we need to generate a unique ID or as unique as we possibly can to name these files. So I'm going to create a variable called file name new. And this is going to use the unique ID function. Now this takes an optional two parameters. The first is a prefix and the second is increasing the entropy of this. And in this case, I want to do this. This will just increase the likelihood this is absolutely random. So I want to append on the file extension. Before we go any further, let's echo this out just to see what this has done. Because things might get a little bit confusing here. When I hit continue, this is our new file name. So we've got this as our new file name, which we can store. So in this case, all of these checks have passed, but if I had uploaded a file that was perhaps too large or wasn't allowed, this block wouldn't have run. So we've now got the new file name. Let's now define the destination. So the file destination is going to be the uploads folder forward slash and then appending on the file name new. So again, just for example, let's output this and refresh. So this is where our new file is going to be uploaded to in the uploads directory of the root directory that we're currently working in and with this file name. So now we can actually use the move uploaded file function. The move uploaded file function will first of all check whether this file has genuinely been uploaded via an HTTP request and it will then also move the file from the temporary location we saw earlier into a location that you define. So in this case, I'm going to say if move uploaded file, because what this will also do is return false if this fails. We choose the name of the temporary file where it currently is. We've already seen this output and we're going to choose the destination, which we applied here. We created this uh, destination here. 
So if that's all worked, then I'm just going to output the file destination. You could redirect your user perhaps or show a message or whatever you want to do. So now let's check that this is working and we'll actually go through the whole process to check that a file has been uploaded. So I'm going to choose choose a file here and click upload me.txt, hit upload and that's now given me the file destination. So I can assume that this has been uploaded and it has. So if I click it, we've got the uploaded file.